Good morning and thank you for the opportunity to present today. I'm not sure whether it is comforting or concerning that I have so many of my co-authors in the audience today, so I can't go any further but firstly give them a shout out to Ev, to Margie and to Jess for helping to contribute to this work today. But most importantly, I'd like to acknowledge Joss Karras, who actually was the lead author on this piece. He was a student of mine um, and is going on to do a PhD, hopefully in immunisation if I can persuade him. So I'd like to put out my conflicts of interest before beginning and start with this picture, which is a little bit confronting for those who know the book. This is Where's Wally? I grew up with it as a child. Many of you probably are the same. There are a few confused looks in the audience, so I'm going to quickly say that this is a book that is made up of pictures like this, all different historical um, focuses. But the aim of this is to find a little man, and his name is Wally, and he has a, a red striped outfit. And you look in the picture and you try and find it. Great pastime, isn't it? Very hard. Why do I put up today this picture today? Well, I could have just put up a needle in a haystack. We could have started them with the same, same idea. And this is what I'm trying to allude to. We have an issue at the moment, but let me backtrack a little bit. In Todd's talk yesterday, he alluded to the fact that our healthcare providers, our immunisation providers, aren't necessarily getting training while they are undergrads, postgrads in communication. So we are now, it is now recognised that we need to support them. And great work is being done by many of the people in the room here to put together interventions communication-based, dialogue-based in communication interventions to support providers who are now out practising, whether they be in primary care, tertiary care or school-based immunisation programs, to support them to have conversations with vaccine-hesitant individuals. I'm an all-of-life immuniser. I support research across it, so I won't just talk about parents here. Talking about parents, but also adults who may be vaccine-hesitant. So what we know is that we need to support our GPs to hone their skills around having conversations with people who may be hesitant. The problem is finding those interventions right now is like trying to find Wally in these books. So I set Josh a very interesting task to actually pretend that he was an immunisation provider and to actually go out there and try and find a strategy that may help him go into a conversation. So we focused on just the dialogue-based intervention. So we, I know there are a range of others out there, but we wanted just to, just to look at this small group today. We felt that there wasn't really a great strong understanding of the translation pathway. We know and we've got this great catalogue now available to us of what research has been done to actually put together these, these interventions at the front end in a research setting. But what's actually out there publicly? What can a provider find and use to inform their practice? So we wanted to explore the current landscape regarding the availability of online training only, so again, putting out a caveat that there are face-to-face -face training packages, we didn't focus on those. We wanted to see what was supporting vaccine conversations. So we looked at interventions, tools that were for training, were for support, we were quite broad in, in this respect. And we looked at anything that had been developed from 2003 onwards, again, quite narrow. We looked at the technical report that was available, that was our starting page space, but we actually went beyond that. So we went and just threw out different Google searches on a range of different platforms to try and find it. Again, we weren't having a lot of luck, so we narrowed down. We went into health department websites. We tried to think, like the provider, where would their natural pathways be to go and find these in, in these resources? Now, these immunisation providers may not necessarily be our GPs, our primary care providers, who get a lot of information thrown at them. In a hospital setting, you don't get that access to information, so you have to go out searching for it. So we looked at the components, we looked at the language, the funding, whether there was any evidence of effectiveness actually reported in the intervention, 
how easy it was to actually access it. And this is pretty basic stuff. This is about clicks. This is about how many search ways do we have to use to get to it. Whether there was actually guidance provided about how to use the tool, about who the tool was targeted at and how to actually apply it. We also looked at other issues impacting on youth. So we came up with about 32 of these different interventions. However, we couldn't trace back three to an author. There was no information about who had developed it, so we actually excluded those. We found 13 of those had been developed in the last five years, so pretty, pretty relevant. However, only 10 were only available as a journal paper. So a bit of an issue there, firstly. We found four were quite specific in their target. So these four were either targeted at one particular vaccine or one particular group in the population. So obvious or, or, um, space here is HPV. We have now a lot of interventions that are focused on improving that communication around the HPV vaccine. And so of course then targeting conversations with teenagers or parents of teenagers. Um, and so we did find that within these, these interventions, there are a lot of different techniques being spoken about. So we found ones that were all about the active listening, about the positive reinforcements, education, being sympathetic, being reasoning, being motivational interviewing. A lot of buzzwords coming at us without a lot of signposting around them. So as a provider, how do I know which of those strategies is the one that fits my space is the one that maybe I could utilise in this particular, in this particular um, conversation with a parent. How do I navigate that? Well, currently there's no one to help with that. We found there was an absolute failure to put in any sort of action cues, to put in any signposts for providers, to actually make it easy for them to get straight into the intervention and, and to digest it. We know these providers, you are as many in the room who are either active providers or have a past history of it, you know what little time you have in order to get in there, extract what you need and be able to move on. So ease of accessibility, mode of delivery, really this is, this is kind of the crux of the issues. When we went searching for these, it took a lot of clever searching, you know, and, and so are we now representing the person we wanted to represent? We went in and out of different websites, followed different leads to try and actually identify the, where the intervention was sitting. A lot of nondescript, non-specific titles to actually get to where we wanted to be. We had to scroll through pages go through multiple clicks to get to the, the final tool. We found tools that were PDFs. We found tools that were just journal papers. Websites, surprisingly, CD-ROMs are still around. I haven't used one for years, but look, there must be people out there that that is the norm. Look, GPs in Australia, you still use faxes. So, you know, that's, you know, maybe this is old school. We, we should be looking at this. but. Journal papers, again, the issue here is the provider has to drill down through a lot of background information to get to what they need out of that. We looked at whether they, the, when we found the intervention, finally found them, whether it also was compatible in a mobile device. Not a lot of them were. For, for instances, we actually had to pay for access. Again, a barrier. Only six of the 29 had been fully, um, were found to have been fully evaluated. Of concern, we found one intervention that was publicly available that was actually found in research not to be effective. And of course then we only found ones in English, but we only went searching for ones in English. So could we be doing better? Definitely. We need to help our providers. We need to give them some handheld support to get them into these interventions. We need to make them a lot more accessible. You know, we can't expect someone to either go and purchase the, the journal paper if they don't have the access, or to go and spend 10 plus 15 minutes in actually trawling through these websites to provide, to, to actually find them. We need to break down some of the technical jargon, 
And we need to do that by signposting, by getting the action cues into these to actually link to, to help the person find it. How are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to put a plug out there, a shameless plug that I think we need a portal. And I think we are the community to do it. I think we need a portal that has either the resources on them, that may be a little bit trickier, but maybe has the links to them. Maybe it also provides some background information about hesitancy, how these interventions have come into play, but also how to actually na na navigate through the different types. Why should I try motivational, in motivational interviewing when I could just try this approach instead? So how do I actually select the intervention? Maybe it's an algorithm, maybe it's a decision aid, who knows? But we actually need that kind of support platform. I do a lot of work with hospital-based immunizers and pediatricians and other providers and specialists, and they need even more hand-holding than anyone else. So I think we've got great opportunity for some knowledge exchange here, community of practice. And I would love to replicate this work and see if there are these resources available in other languages, because otherwise we've got even more of an issue that we don't have anything available beyond English is a huge issue right now. So thank you for that. My last shameless plug is, of course, for COSI. So this is the Collaboration on Social Science and Immunisation. We are a network open to all researchers, healthcare providers and postgrad students. We're based in Australia, but we are welcome to take in participants and, and members from all around the world. And I just found out we've got someone based in the US, I think, a, a new member. So that's great already to see. Um, and we're having a workshop next month. You're welcome to come to Sydney and join us for that. So, lovely. Thank you for your time.